Over the years, how many players do you think you've played a game of Fortnite with? I asked my Discord to tell me the typical Fortnite players they find when they click on Squad Fill. So now I can bring you 25 types of Fortnite teammate. Let me know which one you've met and if you fall into any of these categories yourself. Let's start with one we've all met, the Loot Goblin. Everything is going well until an enemy drops their loot, and that's what triggers the Loot Goblin. This member of the team won't care if they got the Elim or not, they are straight in there grabbing all the best weapons and items for themselves. Some of these will carry shockwaves to repel their teammates away after a battle, so they can loot without any pressure. They're just plain greedy. But wait, if you're lucky, you'll find a giver. This guy asks what weapons you prefer and looks out for them for you. They want to play as a squad and keep everyone happy and working together. They usually keep an eye on people's health too, throwing you a couple of minis if you need it. The Fortnite giver is an all-round good guy. The next type of player will leave you the second you're all on the battle bus, the solo. These players see their own teammates as competition and must finish the game with more limbs. They look to steal kills whenever they can and make decisions to help themselves and not the team. They tend to be sweaty players who use squad fill to feed their own ego. The thing is, should that solo go down early, they usually leave the game and don't say a word. Their ego can't take it. Do you have a friend who is the sweat assassin? These guys just want to play with their friends for fun and hide away their real ability. They are great at Fortnite, but downplay their skills because having fun is more important to them. That's until they see a rival sweat taking advantage of their teammates. That is the sweat assassin's moment to evolve and fight back. They can crank with the best of them, they can take out the rival sweat and immediately go back to playing casually. These players could go pro, but they leave their egos at the door when they're playing squad fill. At some point, you're gonna meet a fanboy. As soon as the names pop up in the top left corner, they are already looking at the end for the logo of the platform you play on. They want to know if you're on PlayStation, Xbox, PC or Switch. They want to start a mini console war or proclaim they are in the master race. These players are toxic to the core and like most toxic fanboys, all you have to do is mute them. And another trick is if they get downed, don't revive them. Nobody wants a console war. And what about this one? We all know at least one person who is the combo king or queen. These players aren't here to win games, they are here to admire every skin on the battlefield. You could be under fire from three teams and the combo guy will comment on how well your back bling goes with your weapon wrap. The strange thing is, when eliminated, they keep watching and rate the combos of the person who eliminated them. Have you ever been in squad fill when the foreigner arrives? They come into chat and start speaking a language you don't understand. Usually your love of Fortnite can get you through the whole experience and a quick Google gives you a few basic words to reply. It's a little more unsettling when you are the foreigner in the group and the other three people are talking to each other effortlessly and you don't have a clue what's going on. <laughs> and I'm sure you've met the AFK guy. They are in the squad taking part and suddenly they say, I'll be right back. And the thing is, this could be 30 seconds, or 30 minutes, or sometimes more, so you're left with a conundrum. Do you leave them to die in the storm, or do you find a way to drag them into each circle? Whatever you choose, the second they get knocked, they get back on mic. And what is Squad Phil without a kid in the world's loudest house? They're usually great people, they just want to have some fun. The only problem is, everything behind them is so loud, it hurts your ears. And within five minutes, you've probably heard their mother in the background shouting at their sister. Oh, and sometimes they play music. It's always really bad music too. When will they find the mute function? Do you know anyone who is obsessed with completing the daily and weekly challenges? These players will ignore the other three markers on the map to land somewhere completely away from everyone else. They aren't doing this to be spiteful, oh no. They just want to get their challenges done and the best place to do that is in a squad fill game. Once the task is done, they usually leave completely. Mid-game, they simply used you and your team to get challenges done. Ouch. Now what about the fake sweat? The players who want to look as intimidating as possible and wear skins associated to sweaty pro players. They have a star wand, a soccer skin, a superhero skin and look for fights. And then reality hits. They aren't that good and go down early. They'll then constantly pressure you to reboot them as soon as possible. One teammate we could all use is the protector. Players like this will try their best to keep you alive, risking themselves in the process. They'll scoop you up and try their best to stop your body from exploding. These guys see picking up a reboot 
reboot card as failure. The protector wants the team to win, but only when all members are still alive and kicking. On the other hand, there's the backseat gamer, the person who has been eliminated so early, but that won't shut them up. They use their mic to tell you exactly what to do. They're demeaning and off-putting. Their call-outs are dreadful, and they find any way to bring you down. They don't want anyone else to succeed, because they failed themselves. But wait, there's another type of backseat gamer who is great. The Angel. Yes, they may have taken a shotgun to the dome in the first circle, but they don't leave the game or become toxic. They watch you play and give out helpful info. They will tell you how many builds you have left. They'll tell you if you need to reload or how far away the storm is. They are happy the team can still win and will be a part of it any way they can. They are pretty much an angel on your shoulder. Have you met the new type of squad fill player this season? The one who loves crowns. Thanks to the new emote and mechanic to follow this metric, you'll likely meet a person who instantly must show you how many crowns they've got the second they meet you. They are so proud of themselves. But let's be serious, if they don't have exactly 69 crowns, they are useless. Next we have the anime fan. Ooh woo! Next on the list we have the leaker. They have the notifications on for Hypex's tweets and tells you everything. It can be mid-game and even though you don't want spoilers, they're gonna share every single word a leaker tells them which means you have to sit through and listen. Oh, and don't get me started on the TTV guys. Everyone wants to be a successful streamer or content creator these days, and that leads to people putting TTV or YT in their names, Twitch and YouTube. Some of them will be streaming right at this moment and they will talk to their chat mid-fight. The thing is, if you look at their Twitch chat, you can see that it has two viewers and you're one of them. The TTVs will fake it until they make it. Have you ever met a flexer? You may be thinking these people are highly skilled, but oh no no no, they come to flex the latest skin in the item shop. Every day, it's a new skin and they have the money to buy them. Some flexers don't even know they're flexing, whereas others are dedicated to it. They'll wear limited edition skins on days when the Fortnite shop isn't that great. PlayStation, Xbox, Nvidia, Switch, all the skins that are super rare, they own them all and they will flex them every opportunity they get. And yeah, occasionally I will be found admiring their skins. There are some damn good skins in Fortnite. These players are usually the item shop guy too. Picture this, it's one minute until the shop updates. You're in a fight in the final circle of the game and suddenly they disconnect. They completely deserted you because wins are nothing near as important as watching the store update. This group of players will even watch other people reviewing the store every day. It's a weird habit, but it's completely great if they use Code Adamaru. Worth a try. Speaking of skins, do you know a teammate who demands matching skins? Sometimes it's identical skins, and sometimes it's about a theme. For example, if you put on a DC skin, they have to do it too, and suddenly you have four Batmans in one squad. Or four Joneses, or four of the seven, or 16 bananas bum rushing people in Team Rumble. That was fun. Have you been in a squad with a reminiscer? This person does like Fortnite, but always thinks its best days are behind it. They'll remember old times like the shopping cart being released, or the game being void of skill-based matchmaking. They'll talk about the first live events, and by the end of the game, you'll miss 2018 almost as much as them. The reminiscers are dangerous. And then there's the guy who absolutely hates Fortnite. From the first minute they'll go on about how Apex Legends is the better game, or how H1Z1 is the best battle royale. They hate Fortnite with a passion, but guess what? They can't stop playing it, and that makes them so angry and toxic. They'll tell you every game that's better, and that you should not be playing Fortnite. The thing is, if Apex Legends was that good, you'd be playing it right now. You don't need validation from us. I wonder if you have this guy on your friends list, the dude with the crappy internet. In game they'll rubber band around and cause other teams so many issues, but ping aside, the real issue is update day. They'll need 5 days to download the latest patch and you have to wait for them. The pain starts now. And that brings us to the troll. These guys deliberately queue in duos or squads to troll you. All they want is to upset you. That's how they feel joy, sadly. Back in 2018, friendly fire was a thing and these guys would deliberately shoot their own teammates to cause issues. And four years later, they still do it, 
but now shooting isn't an option, they found other ways. They will chop down your builds to make you take fall damage. In the no builds mode, they will deliberately shoot your cover so you are left exposed. And lots of them now carry shockwaves with them to throw you into the storm. The troll is a nightmare. I just don't think they have many friends at home. Maybe we should all hug a troll. <laughs> so there we have it, 25 people you meet in Fortnite. Thank you very much to my Discord for helping me with this list. And here's some other videos you could click and some names of some legends who used code Adamaru this week. Thank you so much for using my code. I'm Adam, you're awesome. See you next time.